hi folks. I am going to talk about uh, object uh, oriented mapping. Very fun, very fun topic. Okay, I love this topic, by the way. So it's uh, something. Whoa, wait a second. Yeah, I need to click this button. Oh, okay. So uh, a little bit about me, since it was more or less was said everything before. Uh, if you want to follow up my newsletter, you can go to nodeland.dev and subscribe to my newsletter. So hey, um, you can check it out. Cool. Um, so uh, object oriented uh, oriented mapping. Every go. Uh, where are we going? Well, uh, uh, ORM. What do ORM do? Uh, well, ORM pro are the promised land. Okay, it's uh, it gives us a very neat, well organized code base um, with the concept of models. Uh, do you like models? I well, I have something to say about that. And uh, typically, what a model does represent is an object, typically a class, uh, that represents a row in our database as well, that all the relations of that row with all the other rows in the database. What does this mean? Well, um, you know, uh, well, before going to that, uh, what happens when your application, to your application when it uses an ORM? It hibernates. Anyway, going back to ORMs, um, what is the problem with models? Okay, uh, and the, the problem we, you got is that let's consider an object, a class quote that extends a model, and this is a, it's called a fat object. Essentially, it has a lot of information. Um, it also it, it it does different things. The different responsibility. One is holding the data in memory. Another one is uh, manage the persistency, including all the relationship with it, and uh, implement. Most of the time, people put uh, even the business logic in there to operate on the object itself. Uh, well, yeah, it's there's a lot of things. Okay, you put a lot of effort into crafting this object. Well, yes, this is the problem, right? Um, uh, the problem is that you know this is bleeds to a very unscalable architecture, and a lot of people that have been Developing following following this architecture in in the Node.js world, but also other languages will know for certain that um, you know the model view controller architecture is actually unscalable in terms of complexity. Um, basically, you could imagine it very quickly that if you only have three categories of things, actually two, where you can put code, you sooner rather you know you you shouldn't sooner than rather have thousand of them because you only have two boxes you know it's either a view a controller or a model or a view it's i don't have a two or three i can i don't have many categories and then you can see that there are companies out there with two thousand models what two thousand models is this something you know it's it's, it's a, um how do you understand if you have two thousand models within the same code base. How can you understand the relations between all of them? And you know, how can you develop there anyway? Well, you see, it's... Uh, um, uh, my take is that ORMs are only delivers a nice ball of spaghetti code since the 90s. Okay, don't use them. They only lead to spaghetti code that becomes very quickly unmaintainable. And by the way, I love Carbonara, so don't touch it. So uh, uh, since 2016, I started developing this uh, this web framework called Fastify. Uh, check it out; it's great. Okay, I uh, and uh, as part of that, uh, I am um, I'm been pushing a slightly different take on the architecture and how you can help scale uh, your code complexity and your features and your teams as well. So first of all, you want to do, you know um, split your features in terms of modules, and so you essentially. You want to group your features by uh, you. You want to group your code by uh, using a, a feature-based approach. So you're not putting your code into oh, this is a model. It goes into the models folder, okay? But oh, this is part of the cart. So we have a, a folder, a module called cart, and all the things of the cart stays there, both controllers and um, uh, all the code related to that. Okay, it's great. Uh, and because you, if you follow this structure, you could actually migrate very quickly to uh, uh, a microservice world, and where you have multiple uh, microservices that uh, can talk to each other, can, that are exposed, and so on. But all those microservices, uh, you know, can you know, you can just extract them from the previous structure. 
Um, and in, note that in that way, you can also control what are the relations between, for example, a cart and a product and so on and so forth in a much more uh, controlled way. So, but how does this all go to ORMs? Well, let's talk about Pareto. Pareto uh, was a phenomenal mathematician, but also one, the one that gave us the Pareto principle. Okay, so he came from Italy, of course. Okay, why should not talk about Pareto? Um, so the Pareto principle uh, tells us that 80% of the outcomes result from 20% of all causes for any given event. So uh, basically, you know, this means that uh, uh, given a certain amount of causes, you get the outcomes and, and so on. But that, how, this does, how does it relate to software development at all? Well, let's consider it this way. Let's say that we have the features, which are your causes, and then the effort to implement them, the effect. And you have that you, most of the time, most features can be implemented very, very quickly in, let's say, 80% of the feature can really be implemented in 20% of the time. And vice versa, the rest 20% can be implemented, it takes all the time. <laughs> Everybody doing development, uh, software development should have experienced this. There are certain things that takes no time, no breeze, bang, 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 I can code like, like I can develop stuff super quickly. But then things get, uh, you know, uh, becomes impossible to to develop further. Oh, wow! What? How does? What can we do about this? Okay. So, okay. So, when you're picking a new technology, what are you optimizing for? Are you optimizing for the um, uh, eighty percent of the features that takes twenty percent of the time? or for the 20% of the features that take 80% of the time. Like, can, how can you, what would you optimize? If you need to choose a technology that changes this uh, equation, you might, in order to reduce time, you might want to be, be willing to trade some, I would be very willing to trade some more effort into the start of the project to be able to uh, reduce the time that it takes uh, for more complex features. So. Absolutely, like that seems a no-brainer. Um, so, uh, so most people, though, when they need to make this choice, the reality is they, they, they we developers are very lazy, and we choose a framework or a library that removes all the repetitive tasks um, instead that a framework that enables maximum flexibility. This has seen this plenty of time, okay, and that became something that makes the complex features are very harder. Uh, it's always more, very often like the people making a decision, oh, I'm run the tutorial, the tutorial is super easy, very happy. And let's go with technology A. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll see you later. I'm here if you want to. Here is my business card. I'm joking. So uh, ORMs are one of those uh, technologies, okay? So with typically when you use our ORM, you write your migration or define your schema, you apply those migration, then you set up your ORMs, uh, you write your models, then you expose those models as routes or resolvers in GraphQL, whatever you are using. And then uh, after a bit though, because you know this is never enough, you need to write some custom SQL and code to deal with some complex business logic. And this is where all the time is spent <laughs> in reality, okay? Um, so, but, you know, for me, the best line of code is the one that I don't have to type. So uh, if this is still a lot of work. Um, and when I'm developing a new backend, I, I, I want something new, okay? I want, uh, uh, so what I want is I want a backend that can be super extensible and can help me uh, develop new things very quickly without, uh, without repeating all the legacy stuff, all, all the... Uh, I'm lazy, so I don't want to do all the, you know, the, the, the easy work. I just want it all done by me automatically. So why should I spend time doing it? Uh, I want something that can run locally. I don't want a backend database for our backend, uh, a backend as a service that only runs on the cloud. And I need to be connected to the, to, to the cloud to develop it because otherwise working in a team becomes impossible. Uh, also, I want, uh, you know, some level of authorization out of the box. I want GraphQL, I want REST. I want to support multiple databases because why not? Um, also, I want it to be uh, built and I don't want to be to build myself. Ouch. 
Um, so in, in practice, I want to uh, have a cake and, uh, you know, eat it too at the same time. And, you know, I, I, I love cakes. I love chocolate. So you can see the chocolate here. There's a lot of chocolate. So, you know, it is that. So uh, this is the catch, okay? I want to be able to have a framework and a tool uh, that can enable me, me to remove all the repetitive tasks, but at the same time gives me the maximum flexibility. Does it exist? Uh, well, yeah, I kind of, kind of exist. I, I, I have uh, been working on the topic for quite a while. Check out at uh, oss.platformatic.dev. So essentially, this is where uh, our the development flow using Platformatic would look like. You write the migration, define the schema, apply the migration, configure Platformatic DB, that's it. And after a while, you can write some custom SQL and code to deal with uncomplicated business logic. And the reality is that this type of approach shrinks quite a lot the development time. Uh, in fact, it's uh, um, uh, Platformatic is nothing more than you know, uh, is nothing more than Fastify, and is built on top of Fastify. So you could actually just uh, you don't need to deploy custom function webhooks and deal with all that stuff. You can just put code inside your node process, and it just works. Um, so it's, you don't need, oh, uh, now you need to deal with webhooks in order to do all these things. Oh, it's a webhook. Ouch. I don't, I will, this is not going to be fast or it's not going to work well. I want something just runs on my, on the same, on the same process very quickly. Um, so, and look, it's, this is also so good that you can actually switch its, uh, um, switch relations and, and not just use our modules, completely skipping our server. So um, let's go and do a little bit of, of a demo time. So uh, hopefully I will fit it in time. So, hey, uh, let's create a folder, okay, make your demo. Oh yeah, the demo exists, uh, CD demo. Cool, okay, I have already created the folder, but it's empty, yay. So now what we can do is a uh, platformatic DB in it. And these will create a bunch of stuff for us. And uh, we just need a little bit of help uh, uh, from NPM to install some dependencies so that uh, we can uh, run our things uh, in the meanwhile. So uh, once we are, while, we're, while NPM is doing its job, uh, let's look at what is in this folder. So we have a, a platformatic db.json file. Um, this is uh, where we configure platformatic db. We tell him that we have a migrations folder, a table. Uh, we, we ignore versions. The, this is for, for the migrations to work. Then we have a plugin paths and we want to auto generate some types. In the plugins, you can see that it's just a normal common JS file, but ESM is also is supported too and global contains our entities and our stuff. And we have some migration that's already prepared for us, which creates a table movie and, uh, 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 and we tear it down. Okay, so we have created something for us for free. So well, let's look at what this looks look like. So what we can do is uh, we can do PLTDB uh, migrate. And you see that it has created things and it has also generated the type. And then we can uh, uh, PLTDB start. And this is going to start our database. Now, what we uh, can do afterwards is... Uh, hey, hey Mateo, it. sorry to interrupt you on this. Uh, we're going to need a bigger font. Oh, you're going to need a bigger font. Yeah. I already made it. Like bigger, 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 <laughs> bigger, 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 bigger. Okay, it's big fine. enough. Amazing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I thought it was big enough. Okay, so uh, uh, go. So now what we can do is going to localhost. Oh, not Loom, localhost three three forty two. Uh, it listened by this the port. Okay, here is what this is the. Ooh, okay, now what we can see, we can go to graphical. You know graphical, right? Um, and gra with graphical, what you can say. Let's let's look at what what the types. Uh, are available graphical is our uh, interface for graphql it's not ours it's part of uh, it's developed by the graphql foundation so you can see that we have movies and we have for example count movies so to count the movies and what you can we can do for example is doing a mutation save movie and we want to uh, save a, a movie with title 
Harry Potter. If you like Harry Potter, I really like Harry Potter. And we want the ID and the title. And we can save this. Okay. Now it's save movie. Save Harry Potter. Okay. Now what we can do is we can do a query and says um, all movies where we want all the movies. And uh, we can get the ID and title. And then I need uh, all movies. Okay. I'm running all movies. You can see that we have Harry Potter here. Note that this is actually, oh, sorry, this is actually very easy because you can also, we also have the open API docs and you can actually run also with REST if you don't like GraphQL. So let's say that we are doing the, uh, uh, you, the, the let's say that we, can, we are running our, uh, um, uh, our, our REST request. And we can see that we get the ID title and the actual object that we want. Pretty cool, right? Okay. So uh, this is, uh, uh, we have created a little bit of a table and with, with no code uh, whatsoever. Um, something that, sorry. Uh, so something that you can do with this, consider it, is that we can do, for example, uh, uh, do, uh, uh, let's say we want to add another route. So uh, let's call it uh, hello. Okay. And we want to return uh, hello world. Okay. And look when, look at this, uh, you see that the, our daemon, our, our process automatically restarted. So now we could, oh, let's, let's do it in here. Now what we can do is we can call localhost 3042 and, oh, and do hello. And you see that we return a low word. And if we change this to uh, a low jet brains, uh, it will uh, uh, return a low jet brains. Okay. Like the live reload is essentially instantaneous. Cool. Okay. So we have to, uh, uh, in here also, you can see that let's say that we have all the movies. Uh, and then you can do uh, our platformatic uh, entities, uh, movies, find. And console, let's say that we want to console log this. And you can see, oh, um, yeah, yeah, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You can see that now it has reloaded it correctly and it has logged out our, our movie. Note that these movies, it has, uh, it's fully typed. So you have a fully typed uh, experience here on, on, on the movie side, on the movie front. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, where we are. Uh, okay, so what we can do now is we can add another tiny migration. Okay, and uh, uh, here we go 002.do.sql. And let's say that we want to, okay, I'm going, I'm going to cheat and let's see if the cheat works. Uh, create a quotes SQL table. And let's see if our uh, uh, copilot is not copilot is not helping. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to do it by hand, so I'm going to make a mess out of it. Okay, so uh, what we do is oh maybe I can yeah okay so um, maybe uh, what we can oh I found a bug here we go so uh, uh, what we can do in here is uh, quotes okay and quotes and we want an integer primary key and we want the quote it's just text and we want a movie id and here we go i'm going to cheat badly i never remember this stuff and and yeah so basically we have the movie id and then we have our integer which is uh, not null because we want to want of the time and we want to be a ref, ref, reference uh, uh, movies ID. Okay, now what we can do, no dash V, uh, yeah, yeah, it's 16, so, okay. And then PLT migrate. Um, yeah, so we are running, oh, sorry, why? Oh, yeah, PLT DB migrate, okay, here we go. Oh, ha, as usual. I knew it. 
So um, typos, typos are bad. Okay, this is I'm missing an S. So PLTDB migrate. Okay, now you can see that in types you got a quote element two, and now um, cool. Okay, so what did happen to in our in our graphical? We just can just refresh, and if you refresh, you will see that we got quotes now. Okay, so you see that we got all the movies. Now it's time to to save a quote. Save Harry Potter quote. And let's do that and save a quote. And we want to to include um, ID. So a movie ID, not ID, a movie ID, which is one, and the quote itself. Uh, I saw. I will make a typo here. So Lemley, swear I am up to no good. Okay, and now what we want in the quote is we want the quote ID. Cool. Let's run that migration. That 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 mutation. Okay, we have saved it. Now in all movies we can even ask for the quotes, and we want the ID and the quote. Now, if we go all movies and we can get all the quotes and all our graph, it's all automatically created for us. Uh, we can also use uh, our uh, go to OpenAPI, and you will see that in Open in OpenAPI we also got it the quotes movie ID quotes. And if you put one here, if you try try it out, yeah, let's put one here, and then if we run it, you will see that you get uh, the the quote correctly. Okay, from from the movie ID. Cool. Okay. Um, so uh, what's now? What else? And uh, I hope I have a little bit, uh, a couple of more minutes. So um, for this. Uh, so uh, what else? Well, we have one more have one more feature to show. Um, this was a recently recent addition. So let's see. Let's go into. Uh, uh, let's open another instance of um, uh, of graphical, and what we can do is we can even do a subscription. What? Uh, so let's say that we want uh, uh, we want to know whenever a movie is is saved. Okay, and we want the title, and we want the title, and then we can run this. Okay. Uh, oh, is trusted true? Ah, it crashed. Happy days. Fun. Here we go. This is started. Okay. Now, uh, uh, then what we get is let's say that we want to store another movie, and the title of another movie is uh, Star uh, Wars. And you run Star Wars, and then you go into the second tab and you get your subscription uh, uh, automatically updated. It's pretty cool, right? Um, so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's very nice. Um, something that you could even do uh, is uh, uh, you can even if you go into the plugins, you can see that you have your movies here, and you see that it has the title and and so on. So here we go. Um, you can even uh, add an uh, add a new resolver. So app define uh, uh, sorry extend schema. Schema, okay, and then yeah, whatever. I don't have much time left, so I will leave it to uh, for people to try it out. Um, cool. Uh, let's go back to the talk. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. So the as I said, all of these is is open source. You can download it. You can try it out. It's uh, it's all available. Uh, consider that as I said. The Platformatic uh, allows you to write a, a, a is composed of Fastify plugins, so you can actually put your routes and resolvers inside inside the inside the main the main Node.js process, as well as you can use all of this uh, in your app. So if you want just use a real module, you can actually do uh, just do that. Um, so uh, with all of that, uh, yeah, the question that remains unanswered is that did I code an ORM to do this? And with that, 
I will say that all of this is available. Check it out at platformatic.dev. The, all the docs is oss.platformatic.dev. We have, we have a nice Discord community. So if you have any questions, you come back. And uh, it's, uh, um, uh, you can find me at nodeland.dev. And I am Matteo Collina. Thank you.